Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 204. We are coming to an end to this financial year 21-22 tomorrow. And it has been a reasonably good year despite the hiccups that we've had. Uh, let's see what we did in the market today. So Nifty opened with a gap up uh, on the back of good global queues and uh, uh, improvement in uh, expectations that the war situation may come to a close. However, it does not seem to be that way. Yet the market is kind of discounting that there is no downside remaining now from the war front uh, more than what has already been discounted. So real estate, private banks, autos, PSU banks, infra all moved up, IT moved up, FMCG was FMCG energy, pharma were kind of flat and metals took a beating. So all trades that had gone up uh, in terms of whether they were oil companies or metal companies recently uh, look basically booked some profit today. So the trend is still long on them but the profit booking happened on some of those counters in commodities, metals and oil. Uh, real estate has done very well in the last one week with the best performing sector uh, in the last one week and also amongst the best performing in the last one month. Uh, in inflation, inflationary times, real estate tends to do well and that's my expectation also from uh, this sector. As you can see in the broader markets, uh, most of the indices were up between 0.6 to 1%. Small caps up 0.9 percent, mid caps small, mid caps also up 0.9 percent, and strategies that look at small caps or mid caps also were up, barring MI 25 and MI 50, which were down, but MI 20, MI 35 uh, were both up. MI ATH2 was also up. MI All Cap was also up. So nothing exceptionally up here, but reasonably in line in terms of the weekly and the monthly performance. MI LTNX, LTCNX 200 has performed uh, not up to the mark that we were expecting. Uh, it is down 11% in the last three months and uh, that has really impacted its uh, financial performance for the financial year. But other than this, uh, most of the other strategies have done reasonably well. The top gainers of the day were Vakarangi, Raymond's, IOB, Tata Coffee and Nesco all nearly double digit gains top losers uh, some profit booking in supreme petro 6% down lemon tree down 6% vardhman ongc is coming on with a, uh, a follow on offer or government is actually diluting its stake uh, at a discount so that discount got discounted in the market today at minus 5% and png also down minus 5% the insight on hero Moto, uh, there is uh, one can't really call it a rumor because income tax sources are being quoted everywhere. A thousand crores of bogus expenses uh, have been found by the income tax department. The company is denying it. Let's see where it this goes. But quality companies like Hero Moto, I think, uh, should not be uh, in this situation in the first place. So. I mean, my sense is that there is no smoke without fire. If not 1000 crores, maybe it is less or maybe it is more, I don't know. But <clears throat> what this has done is it has, it has uh, caused three to 4000 crores of market cap to go down for Hero Moto, which a stock which is already languishing for the past decade. So if you see this chart, the black line is the Hero Moto line. The orange line is Nifty and the blue line is the CNX Auto. So you can see that CNX Auto has still done reasonably all right along with Nifty, but Hero Moto, of course, these are ex-dividend uh, analysis, so dividend returns are not included. But other than dividends, the stock has given no returns to the uh, shareholder in the last 10 years. And the problem with a lot of buy and hold is this that you can hold for a long period and then something happens to the you know the quality quotient then what do you do i mean you've held for 10 years and maybe you know the the quality didn't come out to be as much 
as you thought and you know there are new governance issues so you wasted 10 years and uh, you know now you want to get out of it for in for instance so uh, those who don't have the temperament to you know hold on for that that long and then uh, you know make decisions post that long term holding uh, should should look at more shorter term investing should look at more uh, you know structured investing in terms of uh, staying with the strength in the market like we do in momentum investing which actually does not cause you much pain at any point of time i mean relieving yourself of pain is a uh, is a must i think for uh, for most investors why do you want to live in pain for no reason uh, it's not that buy and hold is you know giving you some returns which are substantially higher than uh, other strategies so just a sense of I'm, i'm trying to give you a sense of how the psych- individual psychology plays out and not everybody is built for you know buying and holding for 10 years or 20 years it's not everybody's cup of tea so if you can do it you know heads off to you but if you are not able to do it there are options available another insight is on usd ruble so you can see the ruble at the start of the war was around 84 and it went to 139 actually or something somewhere or 125 somewhere close to that and it has retraced that entire fall the ruble as as the country is demanding rubles for uh, supply of its gas most of the uh, european countries are still not agreeing but russia provides as much as 65% of the gas which let's say germany imports so it is not a overnight situation where they can alternate find alternates for this and they will have to come to us to a agreement of uh, you know of the trade to be done in whichever way both will agree so ruble seem to be getting accumulated in fact the pope or or, or sorry the vatican uh, has decided to you know buy rubles for its gas and greece is create is having a emergency meeting so it seems like uh, mr putin has been able to uh you know hold his ground in terms of you know doing business on his own terms and the russian uh, delegation is also in india trying to carve out a india ruble rupee ruble terms of trade for the trades that happens between the two countries and i think it is very healthy that uh some of the global trade moves away from the us dollar which is also not good for the uh for the for the us uh for the us currency itself if you read about tiffins paradox etc so it is better that you know glo- globally we have a distributed way of of the trade anyhow so uh mi20 uh, was showcased today on twitter I, i i i highlighted some of the recent gainers and the performance in the last uh, uh nine months odd it, this has been live it's been a good performance about 21% versus 90 versus minus 1% on the small caps so mi20 is a mid and small cap focused diversified small caps these are all the sectors in which it is very well diversified across 17 sectors and cg powers gnf cbsc has been uh the recent gainers in this another one is mi35 which is investing only in small caps very diversified across 35 stocks spread across 23 sectors here also the performance has been uh, quite decent in terms of plus 19% versus minus 1% on the small caps and uh, we've seen very good uh, robust uh, inflows into these two products uh, people looking for uh, you know uh, small cases which will beat the underlying benchmarks over a longer period and here also we had the bsc trident and kpi tech uh, uh, you know being the largest gainers here so this is all i had for today's uh, weekend investing daily bites thank you for watching and do subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends and family who you would like to share uh you know your financial knowledge that you're gaining from here with them 
see you in another video bye